Hello, my name is Carolyn Soche from the Religious Education Office. This is the first session in the independent study course titled Liturgy and Sacraments, and I welcome you to this journey. Session one, the gift of ritual. Understanding liturgy and sacraments is first to understand how human beings communicate, that is, how we express love, sorrow, joy, friendship, and hope. How we talk about and remember and celebrate experiences, values, and beliefs important to us. When something important, tragic, joyful, hopeful, or life-changing happens, we often cannot find words to adequately describe what's going on inside, what values and beliefs are at work there. So we gather together and use special symbols, songs, prayers, food, gesture to more fully express our feelings, hopes, and beliefs. In other words, we engage in ritual activity. One of the most unusual rituals I ever was a part of was the birthday party of my older daughter when she turned 12 or 13. Earlier that afternoon, the se a young seventh grade girl, Amanda Strope, whom they all knew because she had been at their school for a couple of years, she died from an infection and other complications. I, of course, thought initially to cancel the birthday party, but the spirit led me otherwise. The birthday party, in a very wholesome and tearful way, became a necessary wake for these 11 young girls. They prayed, sang, hugged, cried, had the radio station play at least eight times, tears from heaven. At midnight, we finally lit the birthday candles. They cried some more and flooded the room with stories of their friend and sang the gift of her presence in their lives. No birthday party has ever been quite the same. Naming rituals. Ritual is an integral part of the human life. Common to all creatures it is a very normal and profoundly human dynamic. In fact, if we pause for a minute, we realize that all individuals and families have rituals as simple as birthday parties, anniversaries, Thanksgiving, taking family vacations, going to grandma's, planting a garden, eating or praying as a family, visiting the gravesite of a loved one, or even reading to their children every evening. There are so many rituals in families, special ways of doing things to express their beliefs. And of course, societies and cultures have rituals. Um, we mentioned Thanksgiving and Christmas, but weddings, funerals, Fourth of July, political conventions, Valentine's Day, Mother's and Father's Day, Halloween, Memorial Day, Labor Day, even a simple handshake is ritual. And of course, religions have rituals. The Catholic tradition is steeped in rituals. We go to Mass on Sunday, make the sign of the cross, sign ourselves with holy water, proclaim the word of God, we genuflect, we light candles on the altar, we have a Paschal candle, we join hands in prayer for the Holy Father, I mean, <laughs> praying the Holy Father. We extend the sign of peace, we wave palms on Palm Sunday. We sign and anoint with oil. We mark our foreheads with ashes on Ash Wednesday. We walk and pray the stations. We baptize with water. We ring church bells for funerals. We use incense to bless the altar and to raise our prayers to God. We confess our sins to the priest. We have perpetual adoration in special chapel. We lay on hands in prayer. We light Advent wreaths. We venerate Mary and saints. We pray the rosary, walk in processions, not only Holy Thursday, but also May crownings. We make pilgrimages, especially to at places of apparition. We pray to the communion of saints. We bless homes, cars, and throats. And we travel to Rome to see the Pope. So many rituals in our lives as Catholics. But what is ritual? Ritual is a rhythm that makes life human. Rituals spring from life needs and life experiences. They provide the actions and forms 
through which people commemorate and celebrate life's experiences. Rituals are symbolic activity with many layers of meaning. They define and express who we are, what we believe, to whom we belong, and how we hope to live. Rituals are embodied expressions of the truths by which we live, relationships, beliefs, hopes, and concerns underlying our lives. Consider for a moment a wedding, the embodied celebration of a love relationship, the ring of union and commitment, the unity candle, the special friends of the bride and groom, the larger community of friends, the great joy and promise of support. Marriages before a judge seem so sterile when compared to the great ritual of a wedding. Or think about July 4th. People gather in the streets and eat in celebration of friendship and freedom. They sing of life and its goodness. With fireworks, they celebrate the story and victory of our origins as a people in a new world of freedom from colonialism. How shall we characterize ritual behavior? Obviously, it is repetitive. Prescribed symbols, words, and gestures regulate and facilitate the celebration. Actions we do over and over again in a traditional and sometimes formal way. Secondly, rituals are interpersonal of and within a community between and among people. And thirdly, they are value-oriented. They express deep human needs of individuals and communities. They mark transitions. They express meaning and significance beyond a particular event. Let me ask another question. Why do we do ritual? What is the power of ritual in the human journey? We have said it is a necessary and profoundly human dynamic. Ritual gets the whole person involved, connecting our mind, body, spirit, and heart. We are a sensual people who communicate through the tangible and physical. We feel, taste, touch, see, smell. Imagine seeing no faces, hearing no sounds, and feeling no embraces. Imagine a baptism without candles, without water, without oil, without the godparents and the white garment. We are a body-soul people who need to give visible expression to what lies within, to the meanings, values, and beliefs that stir within us. Another reason or value of ritual is that simple word and gestures of ritual are essential to the fabric of human communication. Through ritual, the invisible is made visible. God is mediated to us through the stuff of this world, light, candles, music, words, mime, water, oil of anointing. We are body, soul, people who need the invisible to express the visible. Rituals are rooted in the heart, not the head. They put us in touch at a feeling level with the deeper meanings of our lives. In other words, rituals give expression to the human spirit, connecting us with the sacred in our lives helping us give expression to the more than meets the eye, the language of the heart. And a final piece of why we do ritual is that we are storytellers. Some say God created us because God wanted a people who could tell stories. Stories get the mind and memory and heart and spirit involved. They are like language of the soul. They are vessels of the holy. 
through the storytelling of ritual, we have a way of remembering and making present again a particular event in the life of individuals or in the life of a community. This important lived experience is told and retold in story and celebrated in festivity. Rituals are rooted in the past, they celebrate the present, and they look forward to the future with hope. This remembering and celebrating help us enter everyday life with a sense of refreshment and renewal. Festivity flows out of life and back into life. It returns us to life with new eyes and new energy. I have kind of a mantra for this whole course, really. It is, the rituals are steeped in story, alive with meaning, pregnant with promise. Just take an example of an anniversary, steeped in the story of those two meeting, alive with meaning in their present love commitment, in the midst of its struggles and, and new learnings, even as it is pregnant with promise, that this union will continue. All of that is happening in an anniversary celebration. There is, of course, always danger of losing the story. When ritual loses its story, it loses its moorings, and in many ways, loses its power. Many people claim that the Catholic liturgy is boring, even strange activity. They do not know why we do what we do because they have lost the story. Even such cultural ritual as Halloween is much richer than we often understand because we have lost the story. It was a celebration of All Hallows Eve and they dressed up like saints so they could drive away the evil spirits and they cut jack-o'-lanterns with strange faces again as a source of light to keep away evil spirits on this All Hallows Eve. When we lose the story, we perform symbolic action, actions without knowing why we do what we do. Why do we hide Easter eggs? Why do we light Advent wreaths? Why do we cut down trees and decorate them at Christmas? So many questions, so many stories still to be better understood. Let us look for a moment now at the effects of ritual. What happens to a people when they, when they engage in ritual activity? I, as we have already begun to see, ritual connects us to something much larger than ourselves and gives us a sense of belonging, a sense of unity. It, it establishes and helps maintain our identity, helps us get a sense of how we are part of a community, how we fit into the larger world. When we celebrate July 4th, we have a sense of who we are as a nation. When we celebrate Thanksgiving, we have a, a little piece of our larger story. When we celebrate a Mass as a Catholic, so much of our identity is tied in with that. Ritual also fulfills the human longing to be linked to the past and the future. And ritual, done well, makes life understandable as much as possible. It puts us in touch, obviously, with deeper realities of our lives. When we celebrate birthdays, the gratitude for this child in our life. When we celebrate anniversary, the love and commitment. So much more than the eye can see and that words can often express. Life without ritual remains caught up in external happenings and loses touch with deeper meanings. Death without ritual really has no meaning. Ritual, one piece of ritual that I think is often not reflected upon is that ritual is purposeful and transformative. They are repeated over and over again so that the community experiences the power of the original event. We saw that in the anniversary. Um, rituals are a kind of rehearsal, necessary slow ways of becoming what we celebrate. 
It signifies commitment and also helps make it happen. Let me give you just a, a few simple examples. The man and woman become more deeply committed couple in the celebration of anniversaries. The Jews becoming a more faithful, liberated people of God in the Passover. Christians becoming more faithfully disciples as the body of Christ in Eucharist. Or Christians on a deepening conversion journey of ashes and Lent. The power of ritual in our lives. Just a quick summary with a few key words. Rituals give expression to and celebrate human values, beliefs, commitments, and hope. They give us a sense of unity, purpose, meaning, security, stability, and call us to transformation. Let me take a few minutes just to talk briefly about the elements of ritual and how we do ritual. Uh, obviously, people, who will be there is one of the questions we ask. If we're planning a party or planning a, 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 like a 50-year anniversary celebration, who will be there? Time and place. Um, the words and music are all, these are all important elements. And of course, pattern movements and gestures repeated over and over again are all part of ritual. Greetings, hugs, kisses, handshakes, blowing out candles, storytelling, preparing food, breaking bread, gathering around a table, um, and eating, if it be a cake or some other kind of special treat. In many ways, rituals are meaning in motion. One important part, however, is that we have to remember how rituals are deeds of the people. We said meaning in motion. There is no audience. Everyone is drawn into the drama. Everyone has a part to play in the ritual. Each one brings to the ritual his or her own experience and allows the ritual to connect their experience with the needs of others and to God. Because ritual activity touches something deep in each of us. These patterned movements, even if it's as simple as eating or hugging or kneeling in, in a Catholic ritual, um, they help create a sense of unity in our diversity. The importance of ritual movements and gestures. However, so often gestures can become muddled or meaningless unless done with generosity and care, unless done with reverence and respect for the mystery. One of the very common simple gestures in the Catholic tradition which is often muddled is the sign of the cross. How many times have you seen people making the sign of the cross like batting eyes, or batting flies I should say, but instead, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen done with gesture and care, aware of the great mystery we celebrate, the mystery of baptism, the mystery of the cross, the uh, passion death of Jesus, and the mystery of Trinity. When done hastily and without thought, movement loses its sacredness, and the occasion is often robbed of meaning and impact. We become bland eyes and noses walking around doing something without any attention to why we're doing it without awareness, really, of who we are. One last piece, which is a big piece, however, of rituals, are symbols. At the heart of rituals are symbols. Rituals are really, we said they're meaning in motion, they are symbols also, symbols in action. What are symbols? The word symbol comes from a Greek word, symbole, to throw together. Something we observe with our senses is thrown together with an unseen reality, with an idea, emotion, memory, or understanding beyond the visible. One of the best definitions for symbol is that they are ordinary, concrete objects vested with meaning because of stories in our lives or stories in our tradition. When I say ordinary, 
ordinary objects, I can take rings, water, bread, wine, eggs, seeds, mistletoe, Christmas tree, advent wreath. These are all tradition. These are all symbols in our tradition. However, when we think about ordinary objects in our lives, one of the great symbols in, in my per particular story is a giant teddy bear which still sits in the rocking chair of our living room because it is the last gift given to my youngest son who's now 21 by his dear godfather before he died. And it is, it is like a reminder, a making present again, that man still in our lives as a special friend and godfather to this child. Now symbols differ from signs, however. Signs, you know, like McDonald's arch, road, I mean a yield sign, stop sign, signs mean one thing. Their purpose primarily is to give us information, to point to an identify a reality and identify it. Signs have to do with the world as manageable and functional. Symbols are a far richer reality with not one meaning, but a multiplicity of meanings. I once read this quote, symbols are roomy. They allow many different people to put them on in different ways. Signs, however, are unambiguous and straightforward because they, get, they give more precise information. But symbols coax one into a swamp of meaning and invite one to frolic in it. Symbols are evocative and provocative. They have to do with the world as meaningful and valuable. Their purpose is to bring about interpersonal communication to express meaning not visible to the human eye. The clarity of signs is very helpful in everyday life. But signs do not grab us or stir our imaginations like symbols. Symbols are language of the heart and soul. They point us toward deep meanings. Life lived fully with meaning is lived symbolically. They take us to the depth and marrow of our lives. What is essential is invisible to the eye, is often expressed in symbol. Symbols are part of the way we humans communicate our belief in the sacred. Symbols put us in touch with realities at once familiar and also mysterious. To live with symbol is to live with mystery. Symbols are tangible realities and when we touch them, we touch a mystery that is at once both known and elusive. Symbols are doorways to the sacred, pulling us into a realm where value, hope, meaning reside. Even the simple symbol of the teddy bear, the presence and, and memory of that young man in our lives and his goodness to our son, still is part of our journey through this symbol. There is no such thing as only or just a symbol. Why do people get so angry or upset when the country's flag is burned? It is more than red, white, and blue fabric. It has rich meanings of memory, I mean, of, of freedom for people. Why does a, 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 a person get very, or a, a husband or a wife get very upset when they lose their wedding ring? Granted, the price of the gold is dear, but it is much more than that. Or when we cut down totem poles in an Indian community, it is so much more than the value of the tree. I remember how difficult it is to let go of a symbol. Um, I think it was, again, the 12th birthday party of my son, um, Aaron, 11th or 12th. And um, he had decided that he didn't like the symbol of birthday cake. 
and he didn't want to light any candles. And there the cake was. Through the party, candles never lit, never eaten. I did not want, know what to do with the symbol of the cake. I put it in the freezer until I figured out a use for it. Um, and finally, symbols. And this is crucial. Symbols have transformative power. Symbols not only express our identity, beliefs, and values, they also shape our world, an evolving identity. When a true symbol is brought forward, reality is altered for us. In other words, and you might have heard this big word, symbols are efficacious. Somehow symbols participate in and affect what they signify. They help us carry into the future what we believe in. Now, as an example, um, the McDonald's arch sign does not participate in any way in the promised food. And the, and the stopping sign does not in any way affect our stopping. We make a decision because of the information. However, consider symbols. Those are signs. Consider symbols such as the ring, a symbol of love between a man and a wife. It somehow impacts that love by holding before one the commitment. The ring, of course, is never complete, does never complete the love, but is part of the journey. Or bread nourishes and gives life, never so fully as Christ. Many grains to one loaf, many persons in one body. Or think of the symbol candle. It gives light and direction in self-surrender of the wax. But candle shares in the great and total illumination of Christ, who is light of the world, in a complete self-giving. But somehow, candle participates in that surrender. And finally, the waters of baptism. They are part of the washing. They tell of a much more profound reality the washing in Christ, the death to new life in Christ. As we have seen, a community's symbolic world is its most powerful catechesis. Transformation happens in the presence of rituals. The waters of baptism, the pilgrimage to Metagory, celebrating anniversaries. We are a body soul people who give expression to deep hopes and beliefs within us through the gift of ritual. Thank you. And I invite you to look at the handouts in the book for session one. <laughs>